So I did that. I said, right, time to go home. I get one last shot as I'm coming back into land where I was in the home point. Nice panning shot as, as I was rising up. Perfect. Thought nothing of it. Landed. Back on my bike. Headed home. Plugged into the laptop. Uh, editing away. And my girlfriend goes, hey, what's that? I said, what's what? So rewound the footage. Had a few goes back and forward. I was like, holy crap. That's really cool. So I could see this thing coming from the ground. Rose up. Shot past the drone really quick. I was like, it must be a bit of sheep's wool or something. You know, I was like, no, hang on a second. I was coming with the wind and this is going against the wind. So I went back to the footage many times after that again. And I spotted two more objects in the background. One shooting left, one shooting right. Okay, so this is going to be a bit different. So I've got an interview with um, Aaron Devro, who uh, I interviewed about some drone footage. So he sent me some drone footage and said, check this out. What do you think? Um, awesome footage. He's, you know, he's a drone pilot, really cool guy, videographer, goes out on his motorbike, sends his, um, his drone up and puts his goggles on. He films around, usually real nice scenery. And on this particular occasion, he caught uh, a UAP, he didn't realize till he got home and was playing through the footage. And one shot past the drone really fast. And then he realized there were another two that shot out of a mound near to near to the river or the water or the lake, whatever you want to call it. So I thought, well, let's have a let's have a chat. So let me interview you and we can play the footage during the interview and we can talk it through. So as I'm editing that recorded um interview from a few days back, I happened to spot another. UAP that hadn't been seen before hadn't been discovered before and, and Aaron had sent this off to MUFON prior to sending it to me so I thought okay this is pretty cool so I made contact with him and said have you seen this one and he hadn't so I'm trying to edit this video putting in some b-roll so it's real nice and sort of scenic and cinematic as we're talking and then I spot another one this is the second one that I spot that hadn't been seen before yeah, this is pretty cool footage, um, but let's talk it through. The following is a conversation with Aaron Devereaux. We, we connected a few days ago regarding your footage, so you're a, a drone pilot. Can we kind of start with that? Where, where does that come from? Are you Do you do that professionally or what, what's the deal there? Well, uh, I'm, I come from a family of aviators. So my dad's a commercial pilot. Well, rather he was. Uh, my brother uh, does with a few flight lessons as well. So um, I took into doing a bit of drone flying back in 2017, uh, starting with the budget drones all the way up to the high-end drones and started really enjoying it, you know, because I'm in the west of Ireland. There's beautiful landscape around here. And... Yeah, it was just a great little hobby, uh, apart from my main job at the time. So that's where where it all began. Awesome. Okay, and so you're so you you're in you're in Ireland. It where did you say? Um, Westport. What part? Westport. Okay. And so when you were out flying on this particular day, when you got this footage, where, whereabouts was that? So that was out in Dulac Valley. It's a place I've visited many times, uh, hundreds of times, in fact, I'd say at this stage. Because yeah. uh, it's just a, such a beautiful place and it's remote and you're not really bothering anyone out there. So yeah. what I do is I take the motorbike out there. Uh, I just do a bit of FPV flying with the goggles and I use that for videography. I use my other drone, the Mavic, for photography and that type of thing, slower cinematic footage. So on this day, I actually discovered a cove from older footage out in Duloc Valley. And I said, you know what, I'll take a look at that. But so first time ever out there, I said, this, i got to go to this spot. So in that footage that I sent you that time, uh, there's a mound I'm standing next to. That's where the UAP originated from, and that's where I was filming from. So once I'd spent all my batteries uh, on the FPV drone, I said, I'll take the Mavic for a spin before I go home. Job's good, and took it out around the lake. Beautiful day. Clarity was amazing. I said, let's have a look around. So I did that. I said, right, time to go home. I get one last shot as I'm coming back into land where I was in the home point. Nice panning shot as, as I was rising up. Perfect, thought nothing of it, landed, back on my bike, headed home, plugged into the laptop, uh, editing away, and my girlfriend goes, hey, what's that? I said, what's what? So rewound the footage, had a few goes back and forward. I was like, holy crap, that's really cool. So I could see this thing coming from the ground, rose up, shot past the drone really quick. 
I was like, it must be a bit of sheep's wool or something, you know. And I was like, no, hang on a second. I was coming with the wind and this is going against the wind. So I went back to the footage many times after that again. And I spotted two more objects in the background, one shooting left, one shooting right. I was amazed. So I said, I got to show my buddies this footage. I showed uh, one of my buddies, a photographer and the other a videographer. I said, what is it? Is it a lens flare or am I flying it in such a way that the sun is catching it? Or they're like, no, we've never seen that before. And I said, well, I've certainly not seen it before. I've seen seagulls and other stuff like that and other drones, but never anything like this. And at that speed as well. So I, I don't know why I picked my dad last, but I said to him, I showed him the footage. He's the commercial pilot. He goes, wow that's really cool like i've never seen anything like that so then i was like right i gotta make i gotta do something with this so i contacted mufon and i had a few back and forth to them and really nice woman actually uh, the two of us were just miffed couldn't understand what this thing is um i had to give send them the telemetry all the data the raw footage everything and still it's to be determined they don't know what it is i don't know what it is and my friends know what it is so I just it's just curiosity you now at this stage. I wanted I just kind of I looked at skeptic. I was a skeptic to be honest, looking at it because I was like I just wanted to know. Yeah. Um. But you know, it's just mad. Well, the first object rises out of the ground and shoots past the drone really quick. And as I go to turn left, one shoots off on the right, in the background off behind the mountain. Another one shoots to the left, at a high rate of speed. Um. Totally different to the first object. So it's it's kind of like um. That sounds stupid. I kind of spooked them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Just, like, they were yeah. found out. It's like gone. Mm. So when I saw, I rolled it back a few times. Like, wow, there's there's two other objects here, and uh, Mufon commented on that too. They saw the other two objects in the background. But that was pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. And so, just, sort uh, of speed wise, what well, I know it's difficult to say, but you know, have you got like a rough idea of, of sort of speeds, well, do you think? I, I'll tell you I'll tell you what I do know is I was doing 26 miles per hour, whatever that is, meters per second on the drone. So I was coming with the wind. So the Mavic Mini is notoriously slow enough. It's great for photography and cinematic shots, but I was coming with the wind. So this is probably the fastest it's ever gone. So it's 26 miles an hour going in the way. And this thing shot past me in the opposite direction. Like I couldn't even see it while I was fit by flying the drone. It's only when I got home, my girlfriend spotted it. I didn't even spot it. So I had to roll back the footage a few times, frame by frame, just to catch a glimpse of this thing. So I didn't even see it at the time it was going that fast. That's the best yeah. way I can put it. And it was going against the wind. Against the wind, yeah. And you can see that in the footage on the water. So you can see the wind blowing in that direction. Like, again, the telemetry, like, it, it's going, the drone is going faster than it's supposed to because it's coming with the wind. So that's another indicator that the wind is coming against me. But this thing shot against the wind, which is really cool, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you said that you sort of you started from a sort of skeptical position. Have, have you? I mean, when when was this taken? How long ago was this? A year ago, actually, it was June twelfth. Something like that's beautiful summer's day. Uh, there wasn't a sound out there. There was no wind uh, initially when I got there, and then it just started kind of whirling around the mountains. It was just a lovely day, uh, and I'd never gone to that area uh, before. It was just so lovely. There's nothing out there. It's like it's hauntingly beautiful because. That actual valley was part of a tragedy many years ago in 1849. It's called the Famine Valley. So a lot of hundreds of people passed away there uh, during the famine uh, from malnutrition and hunger. So it, there's a lot of history there. But again, it's just, it's barren. There's there's no sign of man around there. Like if I was a UAP or UFO, I'd hide there. You know, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's a beautiful place. Um, yeah, it looks it, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a really nice place. Um, but there again, there's just sheep, grass, and uh, this was off the beaten track where I got the footage. You have to, I'd cross a river to get there, a bit of a hike, um, yeah. just to get to that spot. So. so when you, when you, when you're kind of trying to process it and trying to give a, a conventional explanation, because we all do that, you know, we, people see things and I get sent sort of hundreds and hundreds of videos. And, yeah. and the, the first thought is, okay, well, what could it be that's conventional? And you start sort of going through yeah. it in, in your head. Yeah. Have you... Did you see any sort of drones, other drones out there at all? Any other people no. out? No, I was I was the last and only person there at the time. I arrived there on my motorbike and there was no one there. And then you get the odd car that'd pull up on the top of the hill. Uh, it's it's mo most people do that. They stop at the top of the hill. That's where it's most beautiful. You can see everything, the whole valley, the lakes. They take a picture and they just keep driving. There's not really many places to walk around there unless you're going on a hike. So it's like a it's a it's a go between. You're just driving through the the valley itself and taking it in. There's no real 
uh, planned walks or benches, no benches or anything like that. Um, I think it's just in keeping with the area, keeping it the way it is, uh, that kind of way. So, like, there's no other drones in the area, absolutely not. No, you'd hear it even, you know, it, there's such an echo around the place. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was the only one there. And did did you get any idea of size? Did you, did you, I mean, I appreciate you didn't see it at the time, but in terms of watching the footage back, did you get any indication? That's, that's the one thing I can't judge. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't put a size on it. It was going so fast. Um, I'd say no bigger than a commercial drone, maybe. That's my opinion now, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Again, it was moving so fast. I'm not an expert on uh, anything like that, so... <laughs> Yeah, well, there's very few people that are. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, yeah, it's, still it's, true, yeah. you know, yeah. even even when you go to move on uh, and uh, you yeah. know say, what do you think of this? It's that you know they're, they're just normal people who you know pay more Absolutely. of an interest in the subject, and, and I guess and you know, they've seen lots of. Yeah, yeah, it's it is it's a fascinating subject. It really is. Like, I'm a big Bob Lazar fan. I have been for years. Uh, did a project on him. Uh, cool dude. Uh, I, like my background is in science, so I look at things. Um. Uh, evidence based, facts based. Yeah. I like to have a bit of skepticism, healthy bit of it. Not yeah. just, yeah. you know, oh, look at that thing. It's definitely alien. There's, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to keep it real um, and uh, look at the evidence and facts. So it's nice to have a bit of tele telemetry data from the drone there and the conditions on the day. It was going against the wind. Not, like experts hadn't seen it before. So it's, it's, um, everyone's agreeing they're on the same path that they don't, they've never seen anything like before. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, good mm -hmm. capture, great capture. Have you been back out there since? Is there yesterday? Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's, ironically enough, my my dad goes, "Let's go to Dulac Valley." I said, like, "Okay," just out of the out of the blue. So went for a spin out there, and it was it was lovely. Actually, went to the same spot as well. Um, I think he was trying to catch a glimpse, but <laughs> up in there. That so was what, cool though. What what's the the what was the video quality on that? Was it? So 4K, what's the frame rate? Was it 4K? 2.6K uh, on the Mavic Mini. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I had an ND filter on it as well, just to take away a bit of the sun, just for the photography purposes. Um, so, yeah, it's, I don't know, it was a bit of glare that day as well. Like, it was a very sunny day. It was The sun was high in the sky. Um, I can't remember the exact time, but it was very glary. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, well, 2.6K is the, image quality yeah interesting so where did your if you don't mind me asking where, where did your interest in the the you, you mentioned bob lazar and stuff and uh, uh, do you, are you aware of the um project gravitor do you, do you know about that oh yeah yeah ivan to telly and yeah, all yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that really looking forward to that yeah like great in 3d <laughs> yeah, yeah it's very cool like the yeah. whole um area 51 thing i suppose everyone's heard of that and there's so much more to it. You know, at first glance, everyone knows about Area 51, but there's so many other little things to it. You know, like I'm following David Grush and George Knapp and all that. It's just fascinating stuff. Yeah, it's so many rabbit holes cool. to go down, isn't there? Absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. And that's the danger sometimes as well. They don't go too far down the rabbit hole. <laughs> there is, as you know yourself, you, you're an expert on this yourself, I'd say there's so much noise out there. So much. It's hard to find the, the good stuff. Yeah. But it, when you do, like, you find people who are credible, like David Grush and... I think I I think Bob is pretty credible dude. He's a smart guy. Mm. But that's my opinion. Yeah. And no, I completely agree. Stuff, and you're right. I think it's I mean that's part of the fun, isn't it? It's it's kind of like a, a chess, not a chess, a, it's like a puzzle. It's it's getting the pieces yeah. of the puzzle, putting them together and go, Well, I don't like this piece, that's get rid of that yeah. one and, and putting bits together. For sure, yeah. I, I love it. That's oh, interesting. It. It's something where away did from your, the norm. Where did your interest start from then? I mean, you know, going back, when when do you think it sort of started? Was it a young age or I was 19, actually. Um, I was doing a mechanics course and I was uh, doing a vocational uh, module. So I was asked to do a project and a presentation. It was five minutes long. And I said, you know, what am I going to talk about? You know, I could talk about engines, but everyone was doing that. So I said, you know what? I'll go off the beaten track altogether. Talk about Bob Lazar. I could talk about him all day. So I mentioned Area 51, S4, uh, like even the stuff to put in the space shuttle, Teflon, you know, for non-stick pans. Yeah. Like, yeah. I brought that into us. Like, do you know where non-stick pans came originated from? They're fascinated. Like, what? SR seventy one Blackbird is out there. If you want, back in the fifties, like that technology was around then. You know, I was like, can you imagine what they're working on now? Yeah. Um, and you can see a lot of jaws dropping because they had all the facts from Google. <laughs> None of my own knowledge, of course, but 
just the way I convey to people like, oh, it's fascinating, you know, because not everyone talks about this type of thing. And some people think you're a nut. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it, it's, it's stigmatized uh, a lot more then as well. Like I think people talk about it more now so or more so now. But back then it was definitely stigmatized. And in Ireland, they're like, what's your man there? Is he, <laughs> is he well? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's right. the, yeah, that's where the interest came from. And I just kind of followed Bob's story. Um, I know I'm I'm only 34 myself. That all happened what, back in the 80s. But yeah, just I follow Bob a lot and uh, George Knapp's cases and that. Um, so stuff, the, some of the UK stuff as well. Uh, the Calvine. Yeah. UFO, yeah that was yeah. really cool. Um, things like that yeah yeah there's some, there's, there's some great cases now, i think people forget that stuff happened in the uk and and um in scotland you know all over the place in fact and you know you've got yeah. the broad broadhaven case and calvin like you say um yeah just all over the world and but the problem is it's it's so a lot of the famous cases and tv shows made out of them films made out of them are very much americanized and and you know so people yes. seem to think that that's you know it's it's roswell and then something about congress and david grush and that's it that's the, the whole history of yeah. your, you know ufology and it's just so yeah. rich with information and, and stories and history um yeah, yeah it's absolutely. like it's it's very americanized isn't it yeah it is mm. um i would never have thought i've seen something here in dulac valley i tell you that much yeah, this is pretty cool yeah i mean i get i get sent footage from everywhere in the world i mean all the time yeah Stuff in the UK, oh. stuff, yeah, just everywhere, and and I'll often see that. Oh, yeah, it's always it's always an American thing. No, it's not. Just look, you know, if I could show somebody my DMs, obviously I wouldn't because of you know people's privacy. But if I could, I'd go like look at all of these different countries, and yeah. I put like um uh, some stories out the other day, and I asked uh, two questions for people to respond to, and I anonymized their names, but it was just yeah. have you have you seen a UFO and where and where do you live? And it was just pages and pages and pages of just different countries. Really? Yes, yes, different countries and. And it's, it's it, it, yeah, it's a fun exercise to do, but it's just, it's everywhere. You know, I've had it from, I think I spoke to somebody today from India, from Canada, um, obviously speaking to yourself, um, just loads from America, obviously, Canada, yeah, uh, Canada yeah. mentioned that, but yeah, just, uh, you know, just one day as an example, but over the period of, you know, a year, it's virtually every country yeah. Um, that, yeah, that people are seeing things and all sorts of different things. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot that's misidentified that's conventional, but, you know, there are that, that percentage that okay i can't explain that you know that's yeah. that's unusual yeah that's unusual and, you know, like i'm sure like a man of your experience you as you've said you've seen a lot of different footage there must be something you could you look at and go okay that's that's cool i haven't seen that yeah. before yeah you know well, i mean I'm sure you i mean your footage is you know falls into that bracket because it's like i can't i can't really i can't really explain that you know and that's what's so exciting about it you know that's, yeah. that's why it's so cool Oh, have you cool. um have you got you, you know once you've got footage like that and it's kind of sat there in your hard drive on your computer or yep. whatever what do you do i mean you know have you got any thoughts of have you put it out did you put it out online at all at the time i did back in um maybe july last year i put up on facebook just a video and i did a, a, a i rewound the clip i spotted the first one and then i kind of pushed the screen up to the other two objects and a few of the lads in the warehouse actually like, what the hell was that? <laughs> what you put up on Facebook? I was like, uh, I don't know. And he goes, how do you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know. So I asked a few other people and they were, I met them in the corridor actually at work. They're like, what the hell was that? So, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> so it was cool, but it was frustrating because I wanted to kind of say, oh, I was just something, you know, something like a bit of fluff flying through the air. But it just isn't. Yeah. It can't be easily just thrown away. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's really cool. You mentioned your dad's a, a pilot. Has he, had he ever seen anything? Has he ever seen anything? Is he still flying? No, he's uh, auditing now, but he was a commercial pilot for years, um, flying various different types of aircraft. Uh, so since he was 16, he was, you know, PPL pilot and then moved up to multi IR and then ATPL, the commercial pilot. Um, but no, he's never said anything like it. He's just laughing because he's like, that is cool. All the years flying, he's never said anything like that. And his son picks up on a drone. He's like, God yeah, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, he didn't know what it was. And that actually, that was a catalyst for me to go to MUFON. I was like, right, I got to do something with this. It's not, as you said, it's not sitting in the hard drive anymore. Mm. And yeah, they literally, they have no answer either. So I, I wish someone out there knew something about this or had seen it before, just to put it to bed. Yeah. I've got a feeling that it's probably going to be one of those ones that sits there for a long, long time, and you, you know, yeah. you're never going to fully get an answer for it. But um, for sure, 
it kind of brings me on to my next question. And I, you know, I appreciate that a lot of people aren't, they've not made their mind up and they're still open-minded and, and some people don't like speculating, but I like to ask the question anyway, do you sure. have any kind of opinion on, on what, so we, we were talking about sort of UFOs and obviously not the uh, things that we can kind of explain and, and describe away conventionally, but yeah. the stuff that we just can't explain um, and mm -hmm. perhaps some of the, uh, you know, claims of people like Bob Lazar and stuff. Do you yeah. have any opinion on what that might be? Have you narrowed your opinion in one direction or another? Um, like as in the UAP issue or like, yeah. what do I think it is? Yeah. Well, there is a lot of black pro programs out there and stuff that's kept off the books. I think there is a lot of that going on and it can explain a lot of cases. That's my opinion on that. Uh, as for the whole extraterrestrial topic, I think it'd be very foolish of us to think that there's nothing else out there. I really do think there is something else out there. Like, you know, I read a fact the last day for every grain of sand on every beach on the planet, there's a star. So like, come on, play the odds yeah. even. Like, yeah. Even the Fermi paradox will tell you there is habitable, plan habitable planets out there. So I think, yeah, I do think there's life out there. Um, I think, again, there's a lot of projects gone, especially in the States. That's where the big money is, the big military budgets, that type of thing. I'm sure there is plenty of underground bases and uh, money funneled into different projects. Like, you know, I was reading up another thing the last day in, out in Area 51. There's a line going into the ground, an electricity line. It's enough to power a city, but just disappears into the middle of the ground, <laughs> into the <laughs> desert floor. So that 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 alone is fascinating. I think there's so many other things out there that we don't know. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do think there's other things out there. I really do. Yeah. Uh, be it uh, black projects or extraterrestrial technology, it definitely is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I take it prior to this sighting, this um, this capture on your on your drone cam. Have you have you ever seen anything else before? Uh, only once. And I and I, I can't verify if it's true or not, but it was with my dad again. Actually, uh, he lives in the Neil in Ballon Robe There, it's just about eighteen miles away. And we're out having a barbecue one night with the fire pit going the whole lot, and we're just looking at the stars as we do, just have a look up the Big Dipper and all that. And you know, Dad's trying to meteorology and you know navigation and that type of thing. And we're just looking at the odd satellite. You know, you can see the satellites. You can distinguish between them. You know, they'd be tiny but high, moving at high rates of speed. But there was one object that just it was coming along like a satellite would, and stopped, turned, went back the other way. <laughs> and me and him saw it. And I don't know if, I don't know how to explain it. You get that kind of, uh, it's a chill or a adrenaline. Whoa, you know, what was that? And my dad's like, Arr, because he calls me Arr, my nickname. Arr, look, look at that thing there. So I saw it anyway, and he said, no, that's not normal. So that was pretty cool. That's the only time I've ever seen anything that was abnormal. Mm. Other than that, we just have a look at the satellites and the ISS space station to be going over. We'd have a look at that, that type of thing. But he definitely was gobsmacked that night. That's going back a long time. I was about 16, I think, many years ago, but 18 years ago. But yeah, it was all the sun thing as well. It was pretty mm. cool. Yeah. And great that you've seen it with somebody because I well, I get this a lot where people see things and because it's on their own they're, or they see it on their own, they're, they're like cautious about telling somebody else because like, OK, yeah. you, know, you, you thought you saw something. But when it's corroborated with two people, it's like, no, we definitely saw something. Yeah. <laughs> that was, you know, that was definitely something weird. Um, yeah. 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 And I, interesting that you say that about that kind of feeling, because I, I had my very first sighting. I mean, I've been deep into this subject for quite quite a while and had never seen anything. And I was okay. out in my garden. I've I, um, I mentioned it. I talked about it for the first time in a podcast I put out yesterday with Melissa Tittle. But mm. I'd, I'll, I would I'll explain it again. I, I'd gone into the garden. I let my dogs out before I go to bed, as most people do. Um, yeah. But it had been a really long, really long interview. So I did three interviews in a row. One was, uh, sorry, two with um, two in a row back to back with um, a couple of, uh, one was a researcher, another one's a, um, a written experiencer but also um, a researcher I guess and then yeah. with Jack Sarfati who's like a ex-CIA physicist theor oh. theoretical physicist anyway that Ooh. the Jack Sarfati one went on for like two hours it was like the longest one I've ever done and we were yeah. just we, we planned on like 45 minutes and two hours later we're like wow and it was great wow. fantastic interview but we just by that point it's like 2 two thirty in the morning and I think yeah. by the time I sort of logged off and and gone to sort the dogs out it was about 2 50 and as I do always, kind of look up in the sky, you know, five minutes or so while the dogs sort themselves out. 
and yeah. yeah you know similar sort of thing uh, it, what looked like to me a star in a sort of a cluster of stars moved across the sky mm. kind of slowed stopped and it was sort of a pulse this time obviously i appreciate yours wasn't a, a pulse but it, it sort of stopped almost stopped yeah. slowed right down a pulse of light and it was really bright like not it didn't illuminate the sky but it was like that's weird that's you know the real cool, pulse yeah. and then just continued off um at a bit of bit of a rate of speed and by oh. the time i thought about getting my phone out to to film it was sort of over there and there were yeah. another cluster of stars at that part of the sky there so i didn't really know which one it was because it sort of blended in yeah so yeah but that feeling i was i had that when it did that pulse i was like whoa hang on a minute this is I, I'm, I'm seeing something and this is what you know you know it, not it ordinary just, yeah it's un un unusual out of the ordinary not yeah. seen anything like it before i mean i've seen some footage like that but in terms of with my own eyes yeah i've never and seen what anything think, what did you think initially like what, what was your first thought is that well is yeah my first thought was and this is the thing i was talking about this yesterday in the discord uh chat my first thought was i had like my my brain had split in two where one part oh. of my brain was thinking that's a ufo that's you know that's you can't explain that. That's something that's just unexplainable. And then the other part of my brain is saying, there's a conventional explanation for this, figure it out. And now having yeah. this fight between the two sides of my brain, well, yeah. what is it then? <laughs> well, it, you know, you've never seen anything like that. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean I don't, it doesn't mean it's not conventional. Maybe a satellite is doing something strange, you know, so all of these sort of conflicting thoughts in my head. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. And then I went to bed and had a bit more processing time. Well, but, that's um, true. Yeah. As your first, um, you know, live experience of this or yeah, yeah, my first ever experience, my first ever sighting, like you know, personal sort of experience that I'd ever had. Um, and it was only you know a few a few days ago, so yeah, it was, well, it, it, was, it was a cool experience. It's still, it's still there, still fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still yeah. processing it. Really, I'm going to try and make like an animated video, so I can I'm going to like do a video of my my sighting with some animations, so people can kind of visualize oh, wow. it a bit better than me just explaining it. I'd but, love to um, see that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to making it, just so I can kind of like almost like document it. You know, like some people write, you know, their thoughts in a journal or whatever. I just kind of want to document it video wise, and I can, yeah, you know, yeah, because you forget specifics as the time goes on. You know, just natural. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool, yes. nice one. All right, well, um, Aaron, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, mm -hmm. and hopefully, we'll we'll stay in touch and um, yeah, talk again good. in the future. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks. Good to be Take here. Take care of yourself, man. Take care, buddy. Take care.